we've been going on some walks and stuff, and it seems like when we get away from the house, and I think I'm curious if you see it today, mm -hmm. it seems like things are going really well. Okay. The concern for me is just like when we're in, we had a couple times yeah. between Friday and now that we're in the garage or yeah. we're in the um, driveway uh -huh. and he sees somebody walking towards him. It gets and, reactive. And it gets reactive. Okay. Are they people just walking by the house? Just, just so like we'll take him out to go to the bathroom. Yeah. You know, like sit. Because what we do is we go in the garage, yeah. put him in a sit, open the garage door. And it's kind of like, okay, the garage door goes up and it's, ooh, what's this? And then yeah. you see somebody and it's immediately, okay, what's going on? Jack, mm -hmm. no. Sit. Good. Yeah, so, people will just be like walking by to go to the mail. And, and you want to mm -hmm. Yeah, he'll bark it. Yeah, and, um, but and then, it's not every time, yeah. but it's definitely, I notice it more when we're sure. near our house than. Um, yeah, and yeah. what's interesting is, is then the same people will go on a walk. Yeah. And he'll as see as, that. As soon as we hit the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the walk, then he's fine. <clears throat> yeah. It's even like we'll we'll put him into if he gets like that, we'll correct it, put him into a sit, and he still gets fixated, and you can mm -hmm. still hear the, the yeah, noise. yeah 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 uh huh. And so that's what I'm curious of. Like, is yeah. is it just completely when we're out by sure. ourselves? Is he fine? And then is it more like yeah? No, I understand. Intensive trying to guard something. So uh, two two kind of things, right? So one, um, when you correct for it. Are you just at like a regular level like you are right now trying to crack for it or? Recently, we've been, we've gone up quite a bit. Okay. Um, I mean, we're starting off in the 60s or 70s when okay. we go out there. So I would at this stage, cause keep in mind, right? Like, so with obedience related commands, right? We're trying to just give them a reminder, try something else that was wrong, this, that. Behavioral issues, right? So jumping, barking, digging, whatever. Any sort of nuisance behavior that we want. We're just trying to eliminate something. We want to create an inhibition for it. The goal is to make that behavior basically like intolerable. You know what I mean? So. In a lot of cases, when I see dogs that are just consistently blowing off a certain thing like that, I'll just start temporarily for like a week. Anytime I go out there, just starting all the way up with it, yeah. right? And just make sure that first correction is motivating, right? We're looking to see that like moving forward, right? Like, so from today on, every time he goes to rehearse that behavior now, it's like, he's like, whoa, something's different. You know what I mean? Like this correction is much more motivating. And the additional thing I would do is I would stop giving the command after the correction, right? Because long-term, our goal is that we don't have to use a command in that context, that he just ignores the people walking by the street, right? So if we're, say, correcting it one time and maybe it brought him down a couple notches, but then the only thing really holding him back from doing it again is the fact that we told him sit, we're not really accomplishing the goal still. Where if we don't put him in a command and we're just like, okay, cool, we take him out there, he starts hackles up, barking, whatever, we just tell him no, boom, big correction for it. And then we see that he still is doing it. I would just correct again for it then at that point, right? So the idea is I don't care what you do as long as you stop doing that, right? Um, so much more dramatic with the level. So just start all the way up for it. Just get it under control, right? And two, no more command in association with that. You can still put them in a down out there if you want to, obviously, like when you're not in those situations. But if you're going to correct for something, make sure you've stopped that behavior completely before you go to give them a command, right? Um, and that should be a big reduction in it. You know, I think a in a lot of cases, because he's made a lot of progress as far as, you know, when you get him out and you can keep him under control better and the fact that he holds this down nicely and he's not dragging you around, like, fantastic, right? Oh. And, you know, even at home with your walks and stuff like that, sounds like things have gotten much better. In a lot of cases, when we see things hit that point, we kind of roll with that and then, like, we, we stay firm enough on them to maintain that level, but like not firm enough to get them past the next level. You know what I mean? Where, you know, at a certain point, you just gotta realize you just can't do that thing. You know what I mean? Yep. <clears throat> and that'll help you a lot when it comes to, again, getting back to like people coming over and stuff like that. So, so one thing I usually encourage people is it's normal that people will kind of, especially when they start the training process, it's like, you know, like we're gonna kind of pump the brakes on, you know, the people coming over and stuff like that for a little bit temporarily until it gets a little better and this and that. But then we never like get past that. We never hit that point where it's like, all right, we're gonna like actively start looking to work on this, right? So obviously understandable if there's not as much space in the condo and stuff like that, it's a little harder. You know, it's not gonna happen very often, but definitely don't avoid it, right? I want you guys going out of your way to try to work on that stuff still. And here's the thing, right? Like worst case scenario, you put them on the bed for 30 minutes when somebody comes over, you have your level nice and high, you correct him until he chills out, and then you just put him away and enjoy your time with your friends. You know what I mean? Totally. <clears throat> and, and that even is very productive, okay. right? Yeah. 
And the first couple yeah, times you, here. the first couple times you have people come over as well, it's pretty much just going to be him on a bed the whole time. You know what I mean? Like oh. we're not like we need to get we, you guys need to get comfortable with him doing that first before you move to the interaction side of yeah, things. Totally agree. So. Yeah, you're you're completely correct. We talked about that last time, obviously. The muzzle's more for us than it is for him, you know? <clears throat> but I definitely want you guys to try to make an effort to, like, even if, like, in between now and when you get the house, like, the next two weeks, that's still a long time, obviously. If you could maybe two times in the next yeah. two weeks have somebody come over for, like, an hour or something, you know what I mean? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah he's just got to just hold his bed stay, you know what I mean? And don't worry, let's say he holds the bed stay and he's on there and he's whining and making noise and this and that. Don't worry about it. You know, as long as he holds the bed stay, that's all that I care about. The second he breaks it, again, that's another one where I would just start probably all the way up with that. Oh, yeah. Big correction for it, get him back on, just set that tone, right? We're telling him, you don't have to worry about people coming over the house yeah. right now. No, do you think it should be someone who has it and that's Doesn't like, matter. I, my mom came over, I feel like he's really small. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, so so whether it's somebody he really likes or whether it's somebody that he doesn't like or doesn't know, we want to address it the same. And it's a different response out of him. Obviously, in one case, he's overstimulated and excited. In the other case, he's fearful and defensive, yeah. right? But equally, because they're extremes in both directions, mm -hmm. right, they're very important to gain control over, and they're going to be equally difficult for him to gain control over. And then that routine, like, so like with my dogs, right? Every time somebody comes over the house, I make them hold about a 10 to 15 minute bed stay uh, for the, those first 10 to 15 minutes. And whether it's people they really like or they don't know, and by evening it out and making it the consistent routine we do overall with our guests, what happens is we tell him, nothing's different about these people you know what i mean whether it's you know grandma that you love right this person you don't know they're all the same and then what happens is it's cool it's like kind of a cool concept where we see that like the exciting things like that overstimulated state of mind he gets to things get a little less exciting and the scary things get a little less scary it kind of balances out in the middle There's a dog park there, and we don't even go in the dog park much. We just take it next to it. Mm -hmm. um, we learned that from the, when we were back in Phoenix. That, that trainer was like really big on like find a dog park and sure. he's like, I want you to train for distraction on the side. purposes. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Train on the side of the dog park. I think there's a lot of benefit to that, and that's something that I used to do a lot of. Where I started noticing issues arise from it was if people would go and be too close to it, and then your dog could be being the best dog in the world, but let's say you're walking, the fence is right there and you're right here, and all the dogs in the dog park on the other side of the fence see you there and then come just freaking flying over to you and start freaking out at the fence line, then it starts becoming counterproductive for your dog. You know what I mean? Because we can only expect our dogs to behave under a reasonable amount of distraction. And when you get into like an off-leash dog charging you or your dog perceiving a bunch of dogs charging at them, even though we know those dogs can't get all the way to them, our dog doesn't necessarily know that. You know what I mean? Um, it becomes a lot more challenging for them and it can actually kind of increase those reactive responses, you know, and like they bottle it up, bottle it up, and then explode it out at other dogs. Even like, so I used to live um, in this like little kind of neighborhood on the east side and around the corner from our house, there was this neighbor that had these two like beagles or something. And man, if you walk by the fence of these, where these beagles were, like you would hear it from anywhere in the neighborhood, these dogs just going bananas, right? And like the most like blood curdling, horrendous like noises you'd ever hear, right? And every time we would walk by it, right? I would cross the street to pass by to give my dogs a little bit of space. And even then, like, consistently as we were walking by that house even from the other side of the street my dogs wouldn't react but you could tell they just got so tense from it you know what i mean because it's a lot like it's i heard a, a trainer say one time this analogy of like you know like how, if you're walking down your street and one of your neighbors comes out and from their front porch just starts like cussing you out like you'll ignore it the first couple times but like after a while it's gonna be like dude like what the what the fuck you know <laughs> So it's similar in the dog world. If like a dog is constantly trying to intimidate him and we're forcing him to like tolerate this, tolerate this, you know, he's only gonna tolerate it for so long, so. <clears throat> yeah, we need to get better at that. We'll take, uh, there's a park kind of by us mm -hmm. that's a little different, that's not far. Anymore. So, but, cause yeah, this is, I can see it right now. This is really- Very productive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. You know, especially when we started, kind of tense going by the other dogs. Each one, we saw him loosen up a little as we were able to create a little bit more strict of a boundary. And even now he's just getting used to just chilling around all of this stuff, you know? This is like the best kind of socialization you could do with your dog. 
All right, why don't you guys go ahead and switch? I'll have you do a couple downs. You can take them wherever you want. Kind of go, you know, over there, over here, whatever. Did really good. I think that was very productive from the standpoint of you guys seeing some yeah. additional things to start correcting for out on the walk and tighten that up a little bit more. Um, like I said, you did very well with it. So um, implement some of those things, try to get them out and about to busier places like this. Okay. Additionally, as far as the reactivity you're seeing outside, just have it all the way up for that. And okay. no more command, just correct for it. Okay. Just get that under control.